Hi, I'm Ellie from crystallinks.com. I have a special client who came to see me today, and while we were sitting and talking, I realized that this was a golden opportunity for the viewers of Crystal Inks to learn about transgender. Today is Friday, May 28th, 2021, and we have a whole new twist and slant on transgender today. Uh, <laughs> it's June, we're in New York, well it's almost June. We're in New York and it's Gay Pride Month, but I would like you all to meet Deborah. Hi, my name is Deborah. And we met five years ago in 2015. She came to see me for a reading. And when we were sitting by the table, we were about to sit down to do the reading, I looked at her and I said, who's Carlos? That's me. And she said, that's me. And I was like, okay, now remember in 2015, transgender was first coming into the form, not like it is today. And um, and I, I was like, oh, okay. And then we went on this journey, her and I together. Maybe we have a reading once a year or something like that. And part of it, I think she should share with you about how, who she is, what country she comes from, and what the transition is about. So let's go all the way back to when you were born in Honduras. Honduras. Central America. Yes, and you came here when? In uh, 2000, no, sorry, in 1992, 1993. Okay, so it's like 30 years ago. Yes. yes. Okay, and when you were a child, you were a boy. Yes, a chubby boy. <laughs> a, a little cute chubby boy, okay. And you came here, when did you know that you really are a girl? in a boy's body. I think I knew my entire life since I was a baby, seven years old. I used to walk around trying to uh, look into my mom's clothes and um, a, all of these things that uh, maybe a, a, a regular boy just, you know, doesn't do. Yeah, um, that's not really looked upon as positive in families, yes. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. they start thinking you're going to turn gay, you're going to be what is it, a transvestite when you wear it? <laughs> yeah, Sorry that it's not my world, a, but it, it's yeah. it's just so amazing because as a psychic, I can go into her thinking and her mind and her persona, and I get experience along with her. So now you came to this country right. about age 12, 13, somewhere and in there? I was 12 years old. Okay. 12 years old, more like 11, 11, 12. And you moved where? And I moved to New Jersey with my brother and his wife. And uh, uh, we lived uh, in Jersey City. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, you know, place to live. When you first arrived from Honduras, I went to school in New Jersey. Um, I had a great time. It was more acceptance in school here than in Honduras. Yeah, from what I understand, I mean, times have changed. We're talking 30 years ago, you know, yeah. but from what I understand, things are starting to open up. Yes, of course. A little bit. So, okay, so now you're here, you're living with your brother, and you decide you want to make a transition. Yes. So what happened? Um, I moved out of his house because, uh, you know, I wanted to do things that uh, family didn't approve. They didn't approve me plugging my eyebrows, they didn't approve me, um, I guess, wearing feminine clothes, you know, they, they didn't want that, so I had to move out, and I moved out, and I went to live with my cousin, and my cousin gave me more freedom, not a lot of freedom, but more freedom than my brother, my brother, yeah. so um, it, it, was, it wasn't easy growing up, I, I, I had a hard time growing up, uh, trying to, um, be accepted by my family, you know, the people I love the most. I wanted my family to say, yes, it is okay to be who you are. But I had my family say, no, it is not okay to be who No, you families are. are not, they can't accept. Mm -hmm. Older generations, especially my generation, which could be parents of your generation, no. Even the most accepting would have a hard time. Right. You know, if you came out and you said you're gay and you kept it to yourself and, and that's one thing. Yeah. But the whole transition thing, I think to parents, it's scary. Right. 
it's a scary thing what's going to happen and those were the days everybody talked about AIDS yeah. and HIV all of those yeah that's diseases. back in the 80s you know uh, now this whole thing about HIV you take one medicine a day and you're good to go that's in the uh, 80s you were diagnosed and six months later you die yeah, you know, so it's scary. Yeah, you have to, I have to look at it from a parental perspective, you know. And I consider I live in Brooklyn. You live in Manhattan. You know that we're we're open-minded people, but there's still stigmas and reservations and all kinds of things come to you with that. Yeah. So, when did you decide you were going to start the transition process? Um, the, I, all my life I knew I was different, but uh, the good the good part of turning into a woman. Uh, into a little girl, I started at 13. I uh, used to buy hormones from a pharmacy where um, my brother used to work. I used to wash dishes at the restaurant. And um, I went and I told the, pharma the pharmacy that I, I, I wanted to be a girl really bad. And I started getting hormones over the counter. Well, by that time you would have your period already, right? Yeah, if I was a biological girl, probably yes. But I didn't have a period. I had more like what do they call that? Um, puberty. Uh, puberty, yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, but without the period because you were taking the hormones. Yes. Ah, okay. So, you know, and uh, so that's how I, that at 13, I was already having hormones and uh, uh, doing uh, more female stuff, you know, like washing dishes. Did the kids, <laughs> in, did the kids in school tease you? Uh, yes, I had, they had a couple of kids in school, you know, a not being so accepted, acceptance of my um, behaviors, I guess. And then I had other people who were very acceptance of it. You know, they accepted the whole change, and it was okay. Even teachers used to help me, Miss Wiggler, if you're watching this. I had a beautiful time in your class. <laughs> <laughs> what did she teach? <laughs> she teach math. Ah, yeah. Okay. My, my uh, eighth grade teacher was Wigglers. So now you went through, but you didn't finish high school. Eventually you got GED? Yes, eventually I got my GED. I did finish grandma school. And, and junior high, we call junior, junior high, high junior or high. middle school. Yeah. And then you finished high school with a GED. Yes. And then you went to work and you started trans transitioning, yes. I guess. Yes. So up to this date, you know, unless I'm reminded of it, I really don't know, you know, that what, what, what happened before or what I was. So I, emotionally, you don't remember being a boy? Yeah, I don't have that emotion. I don't know because I really turned from a little baby into a girl. I started transitioning at 13. I really never had facial hair. I really never had um, uh, a chest like that, like a yeah, man. Right, right. I never did. Oh, I, at 13, I started growing, uh, you know, breast because of the hormonal treatment. Right. So I started at a very early age. So then you moved out. You were living with an aunt. Yes. I was in New York. York. Yes. At 18, I moved out to New York because New York offers more freedom for the uh, LGBT community. You know, uh, it offers more opportunities, more resources, uh, more people understand, including Ellie here. <laughs> she understands me, that's why I come back here. <laughs> I mean, if an alien sat down with me, I would be like, show me show me your four fingers and I'll do your paw print. Let's do a reading. I'm open to anything. You I know. know. <laughs> we, we've been through a lot. We've had a lot of She's laughs together. And I, I want you to tell someone out there of any age, okay, who's watching this, what's most important, why they should go ahead and be their true self. This is what people need to hear from you. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's rough. The, uh, the road is very rough. Um, get psychological help along the way. Yes, you mm -hmm. have to get help. Uh, help from a doctor, help from a, a, a from the LGBT community. They they do have the resources. I think I recommend I would recommend like that specific location in New York City. If you're in New York. If you're in New York. But if of you course. live in some other state where it's not <laughs> acceptable, no, it becomes yes. 
very problematic. Very, yes. Move to New York. Move to New York because New York is very, very open and uh, there's a lot of diversity here. Uh, we have lots of resources here for people who are looking to uh, make the, the change. Uh, even if you don't want to go all the way, you know, um, I, you need, you, you have to be yourself, okay? You, you, if you have the necessity to make the change because uh, it's who you are, follow your bliss, somebody told me before. Follow your life, follow what your heart tells you, you know? Yes. It's very important yeah. to be accepted by someone, but it's more important to be satisfied with yourself. Do you find that people in the trans community are adjusting better today than years ago when you came in? Yes, I do see gay children, 13, 14, all the time outside, and they're very open, and their parents are very open to it. And I, we didn't see this. 40 years ago, I, it was just not okay to be feminine and flamboyant and uh, to be out there like that, but it's 2021, and in 2021, we have nine-year-olds already telling their parents that they're gay. Some are younger, some, some are in elementary, yeah, well, that's still elementary uh, school. Yeah, it's, it's a rough journey, it's not an easy journey, but the one thing that you learn through years of metaphysics, and, and I'm a therapist as well, the years that you, what you learn is, you have to be true to yourself. Right. If yeah. you can, there are circumstances where people simply cannot. They have to wait. And what happens, this is what I find with a lot of people who are not true, not even the trans people, just people who are not true to themselves, is that the anxiety builds. We live in a world of anxiety and panic and COVID made it worse. And you have to know yourself. That's why therapy is important. You have to get to know yourself. Yes, of course. And only times helps you with that. You know, you have to give yourself the opportunity to uh, 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 get to know yourself. You know, you have to uh, go out there. Sometimes you find one therapist. It, it may not match. You know, you may not get along with that person. And maybe you need to go to another one until you find the person that is right for you. I uh, personally met a couple of people in my life who tried to guide me and help me, but um, sometimes it doesn't work out all the time, you know? It works out with Ellie. I come back to Ellie all the time because I like her knowledge. I like her philosophy. I like all the things that she tells me, you know? And uh, it sometimes it takes me some time to accept them, and um, it takes me some time to... to um, to get adjusted because you know it's it's hard it's hard when you first uh find out that you're transgender it's hard when you find out all the things that come up with it you know and it's hard for um for other people to understand that and accept it. and accept it which yeah, is, it. is that's the big thing yeah i know i mean you think i should become a boy <laughs> how about a boy you know sometimes clients come Usually it's girls, not necessarily boys, and I'll look at them, not see that they're trans. I'll look at them and I'll say, you're a male soul in a female body. It's just their persona, and they're not gay. Nothing to do with gay at all. It's just maybe it's an aggression, maybe it's something I see psychically. But I say, you're a male soul in a female body. And lately, if I do say that to someone, it's like they say, I know that, I've always known. They're not gay at all. It has nothing to do with gay. It's just that there's, it's it's just the way they live their lives. It's just a philosophy. It's just a knowing. So we live in a crazy, mixed up, upside down world where you can be straight, you can be gay, you can be both, you can be bi. I mean, there are some new words that have come out now. Transvestite. No, no, no. That's old for my generation. <laughs> How about there's there's something else using the pronouns he or she or I don't remember what it was. I saw it on a, on a TV show recently. Um, it's something by something, and I guess people out there watching this are saying the, a word I can't think of, you know. Yeah. And it, it's just um, I don't know. I'm trying to keep up. 
You know, I think as a psychic and as a psychologist and as someone who blogs every day, I should stay on top of this. I think your journey has been very interesting and it's taken you from one country to another. Thank God Trump wasn't president. Oh my God. Or you, you would be coming up from Honduras and you'd be throwing you in a cage. Wow. Right? I don't want to go political now, but seriously, thank God that this happened for you years ago. And that now you can come here and you can share your story with the world and and just get people to understand they're not alone. But I think the time is up, so I want to say thank you. Thank you. Yes. For everything. Maybe we'll be back again. Bye.